Jair Bolsonaro has won a sweeping victory in his country's election. More than 90% of the vote has been counted, and he has a comfortable lead over Fernando Haddad from the Left Wing Workers' Party. Mr. Bolsonaro campaigned on a promise to eradicate corruption and to drive down Brazil's high crime levels. Well, Dr. Deborah, Deborah Farias is a political scientist at the University of New South Wales and an analyst in Brazilian politics. She joins me in the studio now. Um, how is it, uh, Dr. Farias, that Bolsonaro, who was really just a fringe player in the political er arena, how is it that he has now come to be the leader of Brazil? Well, a lot of Brazilians are asking themselves that same question, but there's, there's some things that stand out. One would be there was an exhaustion from a lot of people of having the same party be in power since around 2003. So in that sense, there was a sort of rejection towards the status quo sort of candidate. So that's one angle. But there's also one that's very important, which is um, a lot of Brazilians' frustration with the Workers' Party itself. So since the car wash investigations of about 2014, um, there's the, the, the amount of corruption that's been uncovered, including going up off a high level to uh, former President Lula, who's in jail since, since April. Um, a lot of that sort of put a lot of Brazilians interested in other candidates. And at the same time, you have something that is unique, which is someone who comes with um, a platform that's talking about security in a very aggressive sort of way. So for people who are really afraid of being mugged, being robbed, being shot in this sort of urban violence, um, you have a candidate that does come out with that, and also a candidate that's very um, conservative in terms of values, which is something that Brazil hadn't had since the mid I think it's very important to realize, too, that Brazil is actually a very young democracy. It's only been about 30 years since the yes. Constitution was set in place. Yes. Is this a sign that people perhaps want to return to the order of military rule? Um, I think there's a frustration with democracy not... with a democracy that is corrupt. And for some people, some would say that there is a rosy memory of what used to be the military dictatorship. So when you look back, it's like, well, was it really that bad? And then you have people like Bolsonaro who will cherry pick some of the good things from the economic perspective that, that happened, but they will conveniently sort of put aside all of the negative things, almost like saying, well, that was necessary, or yeah, some, some, there was some exaggeration. But, so, I mean, it's, it's a very big question to know if the Brazilian's um, institutions will be able to, to contain him democratically. Let's talk about the uh, economy, and Brazilian's economy has always been likened to an aeroplane that's about to take off and never really took off. Yeah. Uh, it is a flailing economy. Uh, it, Bolsonaro is a nationalist. He had, in the past, leaned towards more protectionist policies. Is that something we're going to see? Nobody knows. Um, and that is one of the big questions that nobody's sure because his discord, discourse um, in Parliament for the last 30 years has been very heavily towards a more nationalistic approach. But the person he has chosen to be his right side man to do all of the economic job, he has very much signaled towards the opposite side, which is a very liberal side. And because there hasn't been really, this hasn't been a, an election based a lot of debates, nobody really knows exactly which side will prevail or will it be something that as it goes along, depending on popularity, really nobody knows. The Workers' Party has been uh, tainted by corruption, a popular leader is in jail. Where do they go from here? Um, I think the party's going to have to do a lot of rethinking. It's not the only party that's going to have to do a lot of rethinking. The other party that used to be the main center-right, um, called PSDB, they also didn't do as well. So the, the overall picture is that there's going to be a lot of rethinking, especially from the Workers' Party, but from everybody else to see what comes next. Um, and this is something that we don't know. In Congress, we have... 30, 3 zero, 30 political parties, mm -hmm. and the two ones out of the 513 people who are in Congress, the two largest parties only have 21%. So it has to be a presidential system based on 
coalition, but nobody knows exactly how this is going to work. So we're all Brazilians, um, even the ones who are really fascinated by the subject, we just don't know how it's going to look like. Very uncertain, confusing yes. times. Uh, Deborah Farias, thank you so much for speaking. Thank you for us. having me.